Welcome to Chem Series. This is Ramya. I will be discussing today about chemistry and the atomic molecular view of matter part 1. You can follow my videos to get to know from A to Z. From basic level, it will be very easy to understand. So chemistry is the study of composition, properties and transformations of matter. And it is concerned with the substance change. And the change can be of any product formation from one or more reactants or any other physical changes of a substance. And chemists understand the changes from atomic level, hence to create very new earth materials from desired properties or also we can create society useful materials. And chemistry is also used by the biologist to understand many reactions in living organisms. Because of its broad scope, Chemistry touches all the sciences, which is why it is called as the central science. So how laws are formed? From younger days, you would have studied many laws which is being proposed by very, very great scientists. So how laws are being formed? For example, if we study about the behavior of gases, such as the air we breathe, we could know that the volume of the gas depends on the amount of gas, temperature and pressure. Many observations should be recorded for experiment using different temperature and pressure. So for example, if we take a balloon which is filled with any gas, when the temperature of the gas is held constant, squeezing the gas into off of its original volume causes the pressure to be doubled, right? If we repeat this experiment using many different gases, then we can form a law based on our experiment. So, the scientists have done this before, uh, said experiment, and formed the law which in which the pressure is inversely proportional to volume, and which is nothing but the Boyle's law. So, what is matter? Matter occupies space and mass. So, there are four different types of matter solid, liquid, gas and plasma. All these four types are interconvertible by the process melting, freezing or vaporization, condensation, ionization or deionization. So generally, we have a thought that mass and weight are same, but they are totally different. You see, the mass of a substance is how much matter it contains and weight refers to the force with which the object is attracted by gravity. So for example, we weighed a box which has 10 kg mass in different gravitational force. Because mass is only contained with matter, so it is same. Earth's gravity is 6 times of moon and space has zero gravity. The mass remains same. It only depends on the matter it contains. But you can see the weight it differs because the changes of gravitational forces changes the weight scales. So what is an element? It is the substance that cannot be decomposed into simpler materials by any chemical reactions. And those substances are called elements. For example, when we take a molten NaCl and pass electricity to it, sodium gets into a silvery white metal powder and the chlorine will be liberated as its gas form in pale yellow color. And these elements cannot be decomposed further. So scientists have discovered 90 naturally obtained elements and 28 are man-made. So there are 118 elements in a periodic table. As we discussed what is matter in before slide, it is composed of pure substance or mixtures. So it is rare to get pure substance which only contains elements and compounds. For example, NaCl. Coming to mixtures, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous. So in homogeneous, all the components present will have the same properties throughout. And it is somewhat difficult 
to separate them. For example, air, salt water, sugar water, brass solutions. And in heterogeneous, they have two or more phases and e in which each of its own set of properties. Fine. For example, if we have fruit salad, these are being, it has two or more phases and we can separate it using physical means itself. Okay. In 440 BCE, Democritus realized that if you continue to cut something, eventually you would end up with something that couldn't be cut anymore. For example, that is atom. Atom comes from the Latin word atomus, meaning not cut. Coming to the law of definite proportion, which is also called as Prout's law, or law of constant composition, states that a given chemical compound always contains its component element in fixed ratio, and it do not depend on its source or the method of preparation. For example, I have taken the formation of H2O molecule. H2 of mass 2 combines with oxygen molecule of mass 32. Per oxygen atom, it has 16 mass units. So it forms H2O with 18 mass units. 16 plus 2. It is a definite proportion that the mass of oxygen that reacts is always 8 times the mass of hydrogen. We cannot alter this ratio no matter how hard we try. And these are the extra molecules are observed for balancing the equation I have been put in. So the next is law of conservation of mass. Regardless of how substance within a closed system are changed, the total mass remains the same. So you can see here we have a conical flask which contains sodium sulfate solution and inside it we have a test tube that contains copper, calcium chloride solution. So when it is being shaken together, at that time these two reacts to form calcium sulfate and sodium chloride. Fine. And you can see the mass. Before, conserve, before conversion, the mass is 184.34 gram and after conversion, the mass is same, 184.34 gram, which means the law of conservation of mass exists here. We have seen how Dalton's theory accounted for the law of definite proportions and the conservation of mass. Before we get into this, however, you might wonder whether there is any additional proof today that the atoms actually exist. Although atoms and most molecules are so incredibly tiny that even the most powerful optical microscope are unable to detect them. In recent times, scientists have developed very sensitive instruments that are unable to map the surface of the solids with remarkable resolution. One such instrument is called a scanning tunneling microscope. It was invented by Gerbening Heinrich Rohrer and earned the 1986 Nobel Prize in Physics. Coming to the experimental part, it has a sharp metal tip usually made of tungsten or platinum or gold and it is brought very close to the sample surface and the electric current bridging the gap is begun. The flow of current is extremely sensitive to the distance between the tip of the probe and the sample. As the tip moves across the surface, the height of the tip is continually adjusted to keep the current flow constant. By recording the fluctuations, height of the tip, a map of hills and valleys are uptime. From that, the data is processed using a computer to reveal an image of atoms on the surface. So this is how scanning tunneling microscope is being used. So coming to hybrids, it is a compound that has specific number of water molecules bound to it. For example, if we take copper sulfate pentahydride, which is blue crystals, on heating them, the water gets decomposed and forms white precipitate of copper sulfate. 
when this copper sulfate is being kept in a moisture area it again complied with five h2o molecules and again form copper to sulfate pentahydrate blue color and only five molecules of h2o can combine no matter how less or more it cannot form thank you guys for watching this video in part 2 we will be solving the problems and how to solve the problem the skill is also being taught thank you